Hello and welcome back to another video. I recently posted a 2024 home lab tour where I showcase kind of like my rack and all the other things that I do here at my house. Um, I showed some network setups and that kind of thing. Um, in this video, I'm going to focus on specifically what I have going on at the data center. For those of you who don't know, I have a co-located data center um, and I have a full uh, 48U rack there and some servers in there and I'm doing some really cool stuff. So without further ado, let's begin. I'm gonna show you what all I have running on the hardware and the services that I run on that hardware. So let's get started. Um, here you'll see a bunch of servers. Um, we've got this one up here, which I believe is a R720 XD um, Dell PowerEdge. These are all PowerEdge servers. Um, I've got that one up here. This is one that I made the video about with the 36 terabyte storage on there. This was a pretty cheap one I got from Amazon. Um, going down from there, we have a few other hosts right here. So I believe these are all R630s. Um, these are all solid servers. I got these all from Amazon again. Um, and these are actually my um, virtualization hosts. So these things all um, have, I think, 128 gigabytes of RAM. It's either 64 or 128 gigs of RAM. Um, and that's what does all of the virtualization. They both have two or three, actually, yeah, three SSDs on them. So we have um, those added to the Ceph cluster on Proxmox. Going down from there, we have this device right here, which is another PowerEdge server. And this is a R640 maybe, I don't know for sure. Um, it's a newer, it's a R320, I believe. It's a newer one, and this is my OpenSense firewall. Um, and router, so obviously it's only got one SSD. It does all the routing and firewall for the network. Um, and down here we have an R620, and this is what does um, some more virtualization. I wanted some more power there, so I brought that one in as well. And that also has the similar configuration as the ones up here. I believe it also even has a faster processor than all of these servers up here, which by the way, these hosts are all identical in terms of their processor, RAM, etc. So they're all super um, streamlined. This one is just the one odd ball out, but it's okay. Um, basically, I have, if you haven't picked up on it, I have kind of a bulk storage and bulk backups kind of server up here, which is, has the 36 terabytes. Um, going down from there, we've got these Proxmox hosts that all contribute to the Proxmox high availability cluster. And then we got our firewall right there. So um, I'm gonna pull up Proxmox here and we can take a look at what all I have going on there. Um, a few things I do want to mention, I am going to have to blur out quite a bit on Proxmox because I've got quite a bit of stuff going on there and I cannot show everything on the video, um, but it is still a nice, um, it's, it's still a nice little thing I got going on there. So Proxmox, they all do backups to the host that was at the top of the rack um, that you saw in that screenshot. So they all back up, I think nightly, um, all of the VMs there, they all back up to that server. And from there, uh, it gets backed up to Azure storage, I think in the cloud. And that is how we get um, the three, two, one backup principle there um, on a super low budget. So I don't want to pay any monthly fees or anything like that. So we're really just running off of um, existing servers and stuff I already had. Now I did buy that 36 terabyte storage, but um, for the other hosts and stuff, I pretty much had most of them already. So that is why um, I'm just using those. Here we go. Let's take a look here at Ceph. So this is what the Ceph cluster looks like here. Um, if I move myself right here, uh, you'll see uh, we've got a couple monitors going on, a couple managers. Uh, this is not advice for Ceph. This is just what I'm using. Uh, we've got 11 OSDs. We've got one with some errors apparently, and we have about 10 terabytes of storage. We are doing some low usage. We have about seven to eight megabits, maybe megabits per second. Um, reads and writes typically on average. Um, quite a few IOPS though. Um, the thing is the storage cluster is extremely slow. I absolutely hate it. Um, I'm going to be redoing the storage cluster very soon. Until then, I'm gonna leave it here on Ceph, but just know that I'm probably going to be swapping out Ceph pretty soon. I'm not super happy with it. Um, it was really easy to set up. You'll see I've got a ton of OSDs here. It's just a pain to manage. Adding new disks like slows down the entire storage cluster for a while. Um, and it's not as good as I originally thought, especially with this many hosts. Everything is connected on a 10 gig network, but honestly, it's still not super fast. So I don't know what the case is with that one, but it's just something to consider. If you're trying to do something similar to this, I would recommend swaying away from Ceph at this point. Um, I'm also using the public repository, so it could just be a little buggier since I'm using the free version, but um, I cannot say for sure. Um, the other thing I do want to mention is that I am pretty close to capacity. Um, on these servers. So if we go back to this view right here, 
Um, you'll see that I have four nodes online. Ceph is warning, storage is at 66%. We're using 58.97 tibibytes of 89.57 tibibytes. Um, you'll notice that it is 89 tibibytes, and even though I said that one server is about 36 terabytes, um, and that is because I am using some NFS storage from my 80 terabyte server here, um, so that's pulling some storage from there as well. Um, we're not using many CPU resources, but we are using about over half of our memory. We've got about 250 gigabytes total of memory, and we're using, obviously, 55% of that right there. Um, I'm not activated with a subscription on Proxmox. Oops. Um, it's just, it is what it is for now. Uh, virtual machines, I've got about 24 running, 11 stopped, one LXC container, and that is about all. So I'm gonna walk you through um, the virtual machines that I do have. I'm going to try to find a good view that shows all of them. Okay, so these are all of the virtual machines that I have running at the data center. Some of these have about 119 days uptime, some have 40. I was doing some maintenance, obviously 40 days ago, um, so that took some uptime down. Uh, the only LXC container I'm running is a Cloudflare tunnel proxy, um, and that is just running there. Uh, I don't really need the high availability of a virtual machine, and I don't need the resources that a virtual machine would take, so it is what it is. Um, next, we have a documentation VM. That's what runs the docs.beamnetworks.dev website. It's using about 86% memory. Um, continuing down, I'm going to have to hide that one. We have Kali. I've got a Kali Linux VM just for fun. Uh, and then I have my two proxy VMs. So these things take in um, web requests from the public IP of the data center. They do some proxying through Nginx to forward it to different web servers and stuff. Uh, next, we have a budget VM. <laughs> I was just testing some things with that one. Uh, there's like a budgeting software I was trying. Uh, next, we have GitLab. And it's again using 88.2% of memory. Um, GitLab is really nice. I've been using GitLab a lot for my repository locally, um, and I can store some code that I write and stuff in that and deploy it to my servers, not have to go through the public GitHub repository for that. Um, next, we have some DNS VMs, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, those just do some basic DNS filtering and rerouting to different local websites I have running. Uh, we have Bitwarden here that's not running right now because uh, I think that's my old bit in virtual machine. We've got UISP from Ubiquity. I've been running that for a few years now. It's been really solid. Um, I made a video about that recently as well uh, since they stopped their free tier. So if you wanted to uh, self-host Bitwarden, or sorry, UISP, you can do that with my tutorial I made. We have beamnetworks.dev. That's kind of my primary web server that does um, the database and stuff for the beamnetworks.dev website. Uh, we've got Netbox running. I was using Netbox a while ago. I kind of still am, I guess. And Netbox is really solid network documentation software. I've got a video out or coming out about that soon. Uh, BN Static One is a um, web server again, and it just does. There's a static website that I have that I just upload files to to share links with people uh, and that kind of thing. Next, we have Cloud Run, which is a nice uh, solution to running um, Snipe, which is the inventory software that I use. CloudRun is a really easy way to facilitate different Docker um, things and it manages updates and stuff really nicely for you, so I really like CloudRun. We have Web01, which does my short URLs, um, NR0, which is a Node Red virtual machine. Uh, it's running on Ubuntu, but it runs Node Red and it does some processing for some of my web servers. Uh, we have another Node Red VM, this is my older one, and um, again, just does some processing for some stuff. Uh, BN Unify is the Ubiquity controller I have running at the data center. I have one Ubiquity switch, it's a Flex Mini, uh, so of course I've got to have the Ubiquity controller there. Uh, CF Proxy 1 is kind of like CF Proxy 3 up here, and it's just a Cloudflare um, tunnel. Next we have a WireGuard virtual machine, which is pretty self-explanatory. WireGuard is a VPN protocol, so I'm guessing I'm just doing some kind of VPN thing on there. And finally, we do have Bitwarden, so I'm running Bitwarden, using that for my passwords. Bitwarden is rock solid, I and mean, I really do enjoy Bitwarden. So that's all the services that I run. Um, if we go to the summary, okay, there's nothing there. But yeah, I do like Proxmox. Proxmox is, is pretty nice. Um, I wish it was a little more reliable, especially with the migrations and stuff. Migrations are really nice, but in terms of reliability, I guess part of the issue is my storage that I'm using. I really do want to get away from Ceph storage, but... Um, it is what it is. So I don't know if you remember, a while ago I made a video about a MicroTix switch that had like 24 SFP ports or something on it. It was pretty crazy. And um, that switch used to be here at the home lab. 
uh, but I moved that over to the data center and I'm using that switch there at the data center and it's doing um, the network for all the servers. Every single server does have a um, primary and a backup link through link aggregation. It's all just running on that simple Microtech switch. I really like that one too because it does have two power supplies. Um, so it's, it's pretty solid um, and it's very reliable too. It's never gone offline. So, and if you don't remember, it's this switch right here. Uh, this one's got 16 SFP plus ports, not 24, um, but every server has a primary and a backup connection to it. Then this switch also connects to my management network from that server that we saw, that Dell server, um, that does the routing and firewalls. Something I didn't make clear was the router that I'm using, and it's on that one Dell server, but it's a software called OpenSense. And OpenSense is a really cool software. I used to virtualize it, but now it's on bare metal. And the OpenSense software is a really nice way to manage the firewalls and routing and stuff for the network. And that's what runs a couple VLANs that I have. I have a VLAN for virtual machines, VLAN for servers, VLAN for management, and a VLAN for like unsecured devices, essentially. So it manages four VLANs, does it very well. Um, the, it is so overpowered um, for what I'm using. The internet connection is way too slow. Like it could handle probably a 10 gig internet connection there, but my internet connection there is not 10 gigabits per second. Um, but yeah, so that is kind of the router, that's the firewall. If you have any other questions about OpenSense, leave a comment down below. Let's get back to the video. So this video was probably pretty boring. I'm sorry I couldn't give you a tour of the data center, but hopefully this does explain kind of what I'm using the servers there at the, at the data center for. Um, I'm at capacity in terms of RAM, um, but I think there's definitely some room to expand my servers and stuff there. And I do plan on doing that this year. I'm going to be doing some storage upgrades there. I've got a ton of SSDs sitting in the back uh, that I can use, and I'd like to switch away from using Ceph. It's just going to take some time for me to figure out a better solution than Ceph because Ceph is so easy to set up and it's easy to maintain. Uh, I just don't like how I'm not getting great performance out of it, and I think it could be a lot better if I was using a dedicated Ceph network, but I'd rather run it on the main network and share the traffic with the other devices. Um, but yeah, anyways, thank you for watching this video. I hope you found some value out of it. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. So thanks for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.